Hello, my name is Food. Nice to meet you. This is my start on the internet for your entertainment. Today I wanted to talk of something that enabled my existence here. Let's go back to the early internet and go over a brief history of Adobe Flash Player. Please, join me. In the early 1990s, multimedia was a tool used to create content for apps in CD-ROMs. One such tool was Macromedia Shockwave, which, likewise the Flash Player, was retired as recently as April 9th, 2019. Macromedia will become more important later. Around this time, in the 1990s, Jonathan Gay was finding intrigue in graphic design and wanted to create a drawing software that would outcompete all other graphic softwares for pen computers. In this effort, he co-founded FutureWave Software in 1993 and launches a product called Smart Sketch, which completely bombed. Just shortly after, in 1994, AT&T ended support for the pen operating system, so Gay took his findings to Windows and Macintosh. The problem was that in his previous target of pen computers, there was little competition. But with the growing giants of PCs and Macs, there were many different programs offering similar drawing features. Gay noticed, however, that one thing all these vector drawing softwares were missing was the ability to animate. Gay shifted his focus now to animation. His team turned Smart Sketch into something that could include playable vector animations that could even be utilized on the internet. The company released Future Splash Animator in May 1996. Future Splash. Hmm. Remove the future sp <laughs> and you have Flash. How do we get to the more familiar branding? Mega corporations such as MSN and Disney began to use Future Splash, which even prompted Disney to start working with FutureWave. When the big names are helping you out, you're bound to attract some attention, and Gay and his corporation did just that. In December of that same year, Macromedia purchased FutureWave software, and Future Splash Animator was renamed to Macromedia Flash. You may be quick to notice that the name is still not quite right. Where's Adobe, the company we all know and love and that I am editing this video with? Well, we'll get there shortly. Under Macromedia, Flash thrived on the internet for years. In 2000, Flash 5 was given an upgrade known as ActionScript, which made the creation within the software more streamlined, leading to much more game creation and website making. We think Flash is synonymous with Adobe, but Flash worked without Adobe. It worked, but when Adobe purchased Macromedia in 2005, something really changed in the way people use the internet. In fact, this purchase is why I can make this video. It was in 2005 that some PayPal employees created a little known website, YouTube. In order for video streaming to work, YouTube adopted Flash into their website. Now known for more than just animation, Adobe Flash aided in the creation of online video, which, as we all know, took the internet by storm. The irony of how much we love Adobe Flash and all that it has done for internet culture is a bit ironic to me considering that Adobe started to die only two years later. The birth of the iPhone in 2007 essentially acted as a catalyst. The iPhone took over the world, but Adobe Flash wasn't compatible. This can only mean that Adobe was sentenced to be left behind. A failed launch of Flash Lite didn't run well enough with the new mobile processors. Even YouTube, the giant who only years prior had elevated Adobe Flash to new heights, was now moving towards new systems that could work on mobile devices. The debut of the iPad in 2011 was just a second round of nail gun shots, because Adobe was already cold in the casket. Or should I say burning, because our big man Steve-O Jobs dropped one fiery roast on Flash basically destroying its future in any of his Apple products moving forward. I don't know how you can recover when the big man says, and I quote, perhaps Adobe should focus more on creating great HTML5 tools for the future and less on criticizing Apple for leaving the past behind. Ouch. <laughs> uh, this failure to go mobile and capture the massive, massive market it was garnering, Adobe pulled the plug on mobile adoptions that same year. To continue with the last nail in the coffin analogy, we're not done yet with beating the dead Adobe Flash player plugin. Another reason for Adobe's gradual demise is the fact that Flash constantly required updating. And when anything needs to be downloaded, you're already exposed to phishing links, but when it is such a widely known program that needs to be downloaded more than once, then you're opening the door to a plethora of malware scams. 
Even I remember being hyper aware downloading Adobe Flash for my innocent Animal Jam gaming experience, considering there would be a line of five different websites on the first page of Google claiming to be the new update. With these malware and Trojan attacks, Apple was left with more security breaches, though honestly, these were more the fault of the user than the application. Still though, it was easy to pin the blame on security and call for public panic. In 2015, Facebook was also calling for Flash's end. Many web browsers were already beginning to default disable Flash. In 2017, Adobe announced the date Flash would be put down, which is the fateful day you likely know if you clicked on this video, December 31st, 2020. I make this video to give a brief recap, but also to pay my respects to the application that I grew up on. I was a 2000s baby and I'm currently 19. I was in my prime playing cool math games on my school provided Chromebook to avoid listening to my teacher drone on about something in history class. I recall fondly chatting up randos on the internet in flash based MMO games and having that enable flash warning every time I got disconnected from a server. I remember being pranked by friends to move your mouse down a terribly drawn maze to be jump scared by a troll face and a blaring horn so loud you ended up with tinnitus. Remember new grounds and the chaotic yet creative minds that grew there. So, what happens to our nostalgia? Well, not really that much to be honest. A lot of people were devoted to Flash games and lots of assets were downloaded and preserved. There were also a lot of conversion efforts made, some successful, some not so much. Big multiplayer games made themselves downloadable like Animal Jam and Transform Mice with classic versions. Some games probably became lost media because there were a lot of creations made over the decades. Maybe someday I can cover those, if ever found again. And for the youths looking for gaming distractions, well, there are always .io games, and if you're really desperate, you can always do some BuzzFeed quizzes, I guess. <laughs> Well, it was a good one, Adobe Flash. You had a good run. I'm glad you gave us so much. Wait. <laughs> what the fuck is this? <laughs> you know what? Maybe it's for the best you died.